Welcome everyone. Today is February 26, 2022. Welcome to the Hispanic and Immigrants Affairs Board. Um, the Hispanic and Immigrants Affairs Board advises city council and on barriers that impact the Hispanic and immigrant community and social, economic, and vocational pursuits. The time now is 1.05 p.m. and I'm calling the meeting to order. Um, at this moment, can we go ahead and do roll call? Andrea, can you assist me with roll call? Of course. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I apologize for the delay, you know, technical difficulties. So this morning, uh, please come off mute when I call your name to declare that you are here. So we're going to start off with Anne Mikula Kiyoko, Sophie. All right. Andrea Lengua, which is me, I am present. Seven Smith. I'm present. Perfect. Anne Robertson. Present. Rasha Mohammed. Present. All right. Elki Whale Milan. Present. Michelle Bermio Bestencourt. Present. Jordan Crumroy. Present. Cynthia Martinez Gonzalez. Adiel Martinez Ventura. Cotter Zaror. Present. Tulia Finucci. And Catherine Rivera. Present. Okay. Let's see. One, two, three. Nine, so we have nine pres present. Uh, our Sally, help me out. That does indicate that we do meet quorum, correct? Yeah. Okay, That's correct. perfect. And uh, Elke, have you received any communications that uh, we have any, ex any excused absences for this meeting? No, not at this time. Okay, thank you. No, thank you everyone for being here. Moving on, we're going to move to the approval of today's agenda. Um, are there any changes that anyone would like to make? I have one, but I want to introduce it to the board to see if there are any changes that need to be made to today's agenda. No? Um, my suggested changes for today's agenda are in the leadership report to reflect um, an addition to discuss briefly the event that will be occurring tomorrow with the Dominican Association of North Carolina. Do I hear a motion to approve those changes? I, I move to approve those changes. I Go second ahead. the motion. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. I'm looking at Maisha thinking, I'm like, is she, her hand, I'm sorry. All right, seems like it's unanimous. Um, we'll go ahead and add that to the leadership report. Um, so it'll be added. Uh, we are now moving to the approval of minutes from previous meetings. Any changes from the body that need to be made? I see none. Um, there is a suggestion, and um, Aracelis, please advise me on this. Um, we had two individuals, one that had communicated with me prior in the previous meeting to being um, unable to come due to medical reasons. Um, and it's noted, I believe, in that agenda. Um, but another individual did also share information that they had medical issues. Um, so they were noted as absent. It would be excused, but we weren't notified. 
So how do we proceed as a body um, to to make that change? Or do we make that change, Shara Salis? You can, you can just uh, make the amendment for the uh, for that to be reflected on your on your minutes. Um, I would like to make a motion to reflect that um, Sophie Ann McCall uh, was absent at um, the 1-22-22 meeting, uh, but her absence was excused along with uh, Ms. Bevan, um, both were excused. I would like the agenda to reflect that, the previous agenda to reflect that. Do I hear a motion? To, accept to change the minutes from the 122 meeting to reflect the excused absences. Do I hear a second? I second. Thank you, Michelle. All those in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Kevin, I'm assuming you're raising your hand. You could <laughs> virtually raise your hand because if not, okay, perfect. Um, that was unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Um, we're now moving to the staff liaison report. Yes, hi. Um, just wanted to um, let everybody know we do have our new director, Dr. Hamilton. She is not here with us today. Um, she did send an email. She was expected to be here today, and um, she had an emergency and could not make it, um, but looking forward to be with us next month. I do have Maisha Williams from our staff as well. She is new to our staff, but not new to this work. And she's been working with the city of Raleigh for, for a couple of years now. And she's been working with uh, the Department of Equity and Inclusion um, as a core team member, um, as part of the equity team. So um, she is not new to, to any of the work. Uh, she's actually just continuing a whole lot of stuff that she was even doing before, but I'll let her introduce herself and, and the role that she plays within our department. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, R. Sellis. Um, my name is Maisha Williams. I am the Training and Development Manager for the Department of Equity and Inclusion. And I've been with the city over seven years. And so I'm really excited about the work that we're actually doing and excited to be here to help support our um, uh, today in this today's meeting. So thanks a lot for inviting me. Welcome. Thank you for being here to support. Yeah, she's going to be helping with the elections piece um, towards the middle end of the meeting. So she's going to be supporting me, just making sure we, we keep track um, of votes. Um, the other thing I did want to just report out to the, to the board, um, council did um, approve to move um, meetings into person, in person. Uh, come April, we're working right now to figure out where you're going to be meeting and how you know everything is going to be functioning as far as parking, if parking is needed. Um, so we are looking at location site. So bear with us as we start uh, working on that. We've been working on that already. Uh, but we're just trying to figure out with um, engineering services, what's gonna be the, the best facility, the safest facility and, and the best parking option. Cause I think that's always a priority, especially because this meeting is Saturday, we don't have too many sites open. So this would mean that we would have to, um, you know, add additional stuff internally to, to make sure we have the site prepared for you. So that's all I have to report at this moment. Araceli, yes. um, so, are, so at this point, it looks like the Pathway Center, are they not finished with their construction? Is that just not one of the possibilities for us? Or is it just it, it, one of the options we're looking into? We are definitely looking at it as an option. Uh, the issue with okay. the Pathway is it is a closed facility on Saturdays. Um, so we are looking at uh, figuring out um, whether we'll have security, we'll have extra staff, um, the setup as well. Um, we do have a conference room up on, on, on the second floor, uh, which will fit the group, uh, but just thinking your group is uh, 15, and then you gotta think about staff uh, that comes to the meeting if they, they are presenting, and then if you do have guests as well. So that, that could become um, a, a bit of a big group, so we are looking right. at a second option just to make sure that we do have a second <laughs> option um, in, in Pathway Center. So it is it is definitely one option we're looking at um, and it, it's looking like it's top on the list. Um, so we, we're just trying to make sure that we have engineering services making the right accommodations for, for this group. Gotcha, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think you're muted. I want to mention something that I just saw in the agenda that we might need to re reconsider the agenda. 
Uh, we have Virginia Rojas noted in the, uh, the current agenda um, as a member and she mm -hmm. no longer is. Right, let me okay. change. Well, I guess we have to vote to change. So I apologize for that um, oversight. Um, we need to, again, uh, readjust and change the agenda to reflect the, the, the correct number and, and <laughs> of individuals that are on this board um, and reflect that Virginia Rojas is no longer a part of our board due to her resignation. So I, my sincerest apologies um, for having to go back. Um, do I hear a motion to make that change? I move to make that change. That's my bad uh, in sending out the agenda. So I will make that movement. Do I hear a second? A second, okay. Catherine Rivera. Okay. Um, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you so much for being flexible. Moving on to leadership report. Um, update on the African immigrant event. Um, I don't see Miss Sophie on the line, but as someone that collaborated with her, I can speak um, regarding the number of vaccinations that were loaded. Our conversation with Healthier Together um, was to load 100 um, vaccines. Um, thank you, Michelle, for making that connection with, um, with the entity um, that helped us get Nightdale uh, Pharmacy and La Semilla to come out and do the vaccination. 27 vaccinations or a quarter of the um, vaccinations were um, utilized um, at the later part of the, the event. Um, there were discussions, pitfalls that were addressed in a subcommittee, um, that, which would be the public safety and social justice committee. So I would defer to them um, when it comes down to um, those conversations. Um, and other aspects, I don't have numbers, the full numbers yet of the amount of how, how much it cost <laughs> to have the event overall. Um, but at this time, those are all the updates I have regarding the um, African um, immigrant event. Any questions? No? Great. Um, moving on to the Puerto Rican diaspora event consideration, uh, we were approached to assist um, a grassroots organization to help with getting um, or assisting with obtaining Dix Park as, a, um, as an establishment, as an event venue to host an event. Um, in my conversations with Aracelis, um, there's, there, we have to vote on certain aspects. We don't know in the capacity that, you know, they are seeking our support, might be sponsorship, might be collaboration partner. Um, so at this point in time, we just, we're mentioning it. We're not voting. More information will come. Um, but um, if you have any questions, is a grassroots organization looking to host a cultural celebration? Um, I would want to refer to subcommittee, uh, community engagement and um, cultural celebration committee to further discuss and bring it up to the board at that time, at the appropriate time. Lastly, vaccination events. Um, Andrea? <laughs> Sorry. Um, and just a note on the last one, just for clarity's sake, are you asking that the Community Engagement and Celebration Committee um, take that up and then bring this updates at our next board meeting? Yes, correct. Okay, cool, 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 cool. And as far as vaccination events go, um, I know that within our um, Within our board, we have a connections to a lot of organizations that are already putting on um, putting on vaccination events, especially for minority and underserved communities. So I would ask for right now, I know that in a previous meeting with 
um, Social Justice and Safety Committee, they had also reiterated the priority of supporting those or other organizations that are already doing that work and being supportive in that manner. So I would ask the board to seek through their contacts and see um, different organizations that are already doing those vaccinations, ones that you're connected to, and um, seeking out ways that we can support those kinds of events. Because as you know, through the city of Raleigh, uh, we do have a lot of supports, not only through our subcommittee, but um, being the conduit between um, those communities and Raleigh City Services, like um, a lot of affordable housing things and that of that nature. So it would really be a great thing for our community. So I'll just put that ask out to the whole board. You can contact me or Elke in the meantime and soon our new chair. So we're looking forward to that. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Um, and this is for all communities. Um, it, we have to be conscious, like cautious, conscious that, you know, based on where we sit as community members on in our orga different organizations and things that we are being broad and, you know, we're looking at it with an equity lens. Um, so I just want to be, I want everyone to be mindful of that as well. Um, uh, moving on to committee reports uh, for communications. Um, uh, Elke, did you have the Dominican event that you wanted reported to? Oh, I am sorry. Agenda. Yes, I apologize. I'm sorry. I yes. That's why I'm the secretary. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. So tomorrow, so earlier this month, um, we were approached like mid month um, to help obtain a proclamation. Um, this is something that we have seen in the Latino community, specifically with grassroots organizations, um, not big organizations, but small organizations um, that are starting to build into 501c3s and different um, capacities that, you know, want our support. And so we've helped a couple, um, as I mentioned in the email, to obtain these types of proclamations for different Independence Day. So um, the Dominican Association of North Carolina, called Adora NC, uh, approached us um, requesting that type of assistance. They will be having the celebration tomorrow, February 27th, from 12 to 5 p.m. Um, there will be a proclamation presented um, state, st stating that it's the Independence Day for the Dominican Republic uh, by uh, Raleigh Mayor Marianne Baldwin, um, and we would love to <laughs> engage and be present at the event. Um, so I'm hoping that all or any, <laughs> um, at least one or two people uh, would come support them. Um, we will be there as, as a board or representative of the board um, as we help them obtain the, the proclamation. Um, so that, that's what's happening tomorrow. That's the email you received yesterday. Um, any questions that you, uh, the board may have at this time regarding that event? Do we, are, are you expecting that we would have a table there or that we would be there attending and representing, but not necessarily having to table, just trying to get it? Um, so picture. we could have either, or that's why we brought it into the agenda. Um, we can have a board, sorry, a table there. That is the hope to have our table there with handouts in Spanish printed along with information on what the board is. Um, we have uh, what was used in the previous um, the Kenyan community independence day. We had a, a board with different survey questions. So have those survey questions to ask members of the community um, and give them gadgets for interacting with us and just give them more information about city resources. Um, thankfully, Ms. Araceli's um, shared some flyers uh, from the city of Raleigh uh, along with signups. So um, yeah, the, the expectation is for us to have a table um, just to be present and show support. Um, that, that, that was not an ask. They've not asked for any type of support um, we are just showing up to support the city along with supporting our community members in the Dominican Independence Day event. 
Any any other questions? I have one, Elke. Do you know if they are doing vaccination at the event or not? They yes. are. Adora and C has their own mechanism <laughs> um, of vaccination. So they are doing vaccinations. Um, as mentioned in the email, they have max vaccinations, their diabetes check. Um, they will have um, mass dis mass mask and um, sanitizer distribution. Um, I brought in a uh, wake up and read uh, partner with us and gave us bilingual books um, with a story walk. So we will be, <laughs> our board will be helping setting that up, but um, it's a great resource and great information for our community to have, you know, um, bilingual books along with information on getting um, children um, reading, um, you know, ultimately at um, great, great level, sorry. <laughs> Great, but yeah, they, they and they they did not request any 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 assistance. So if there were a motion to be made, you know, then that's one thing. But the support was mostly a proclamation and for the type of community event that it is to connect with community members. I believe that it's um, important for us to be present as a board um, to have a table. That's 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 all I'm saying. Any, I can be anybody? there, and then, and then if anybody wants to join me, um, they can just message or text me. But I can be there yeah. tomorrow. Okay, perfect. Anyone else that would like to join, please email us. Um, yeah, we'll be there from one to five. Sounds good, Michelle. No worries. <laughs> You're busy. Um, but any other questions regarding tomorrow's event? No. Thank you. Uh, now we move to committee reports. Uh, communications committee, Abdiel is not here. Um, Araceli's were waiting on that one pager. I know you shared a lot of information with us, uh, but we, don't, we do not have that one pager um, that advises us on everything we need to do. I'm hoping that once the rest of you <laughs> um, give us updates with what is what your plans are for the rest of the year, we build our newsletter and hopefully by next month, we'll have that newsletter built and sent out to everyone that is signed up um, to receive information from us, which are 806. At a well, last meeting it was like 800 people that were si signed up for subscriptions to receive information from us. Um, so once we get the content, we'll go ahead and roll it out. Um, community engagement and celebration. I don't see them <laughs> here, but I do have information. Um, the work plan for that specific committee um, noted that they were in touch. Okay, great. Uh, we're in touch with um, planning. Um, the first part of their work plan was getting in contact with planning and get information regarding um, different subsets of Latinos, immigrants, you know, the different um, aspects of our board <laughs> to help them, to help us and the committee uh, plan those crucial conversations or the community conversations accordingly. We have received that information, um, but the committee has yet to meet. Um, so further information will be advised um, or shared um, once the committee is able to address the information they receive. Um, moving on to economic, uh, any questions? I'm sorry. No? Okay. Um, economic Development Committee. Hello, that's me. <laughs> How you all doing? Uh, okay, I have uh, lined up a couple of speakers, uh, two confirmed, one possibly uh, uh, I want to have kind of a panel discussion about economic development. I'm not sure when to schedule it because I keep reaching out to the uh, Raleigh uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce, but I'm not having luck. The person, the contact I had uh, is no longer there and no one has returned my uh, calls yet. So I'm still uh, uh, waiting. Uh, hopefully 
uh, someone will contact me. Uh, but I was planning on having uh, one event in uh, end of April and then one in like in mid summer and one in the fall, like every three months. So. Does Anne want to add anything to this? No, I do not. I, I think going ahead and lining up the speakers will probably be very helpful. So I'm glad you've moved ahead and I'll be glad to do so also. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so I just want to address, and I don't know if, Andrea, did we forward the information for Prospera? I don't think so. Okay, so Araceli shared the inform some information of an organization that's doing eco economic development. Um, I would say in all communities, um, they are highly focused on the Latin Latinx Hispanic community, um, but I don't think I, I don't think it, it, it's just limited to our community. It's not okay. Um, so we'll share that information with you guys um, after this call. And um, the contact is Jose Alvarez, um, and they've done they've done a lot of um, SBA related um, conversations across the state um, with business owners. Um, I'll also try to assist you guys with getting um, someone from the Chamber of Commerce to call back. But yes, that's great that's to great. know that those are the three three dates three. Uh, potential dates. And like Ann said, please go ahead and line them up. We'll get everything ready. Question, are these going to be in person or are they going to be via Zoom? They are flexible. Uh, I think if we're going to go, I prefer face-to-face, -face, uh, but uh, if we have to go to through Zoom, that's uh, they're available either way because they are local. They don't have to travel a great distance. They are in Raleigh. So they are available whenever we need them. So it could be hybrid? I think so, yes. But uh, the, the, I guess the challenge we're going to have is how we're going to reach out to the masses, uh, to uh, people of Raleigh, uh, or we're going to invite people, we're going to make it public. Uh, that's really something that we probably have to discuss as a committee. Uh, I guess Ann and I and whoever's on the committee, uh, we could get together and have kind of a a uh, short uh, meeting, uh, you know, to discuss it. Okay. Me too. I'll be there. Sorry, guys. Sounds good. Yeah, okay. it's all right. Um, moving on to social justice and safety committee, Michelle. I actually oh, sorry, I, you had a question. Yeah, um, Cotter, I had promised you contact at the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and unfortunately, the person that I was in contact is no longer there. So I'm trying to figure out who is there currently. Um, and who's doing work there to see if I can also connect y'all because I know that was something that I had promised you last meeting. Okay, well, well thank you. Uh, was it Dania you were talking about? No, I had, um, Fanny Salcedo was somebody that had, I had a, a connection with there because she used to be very involved, but okay. she's no longer working with them. And Jimena, the old ED is no longer there either. So I'm trying to figure out who um, is like, physically there at the Chamber of Commerce because I've had several community members who also were like trying to get in touch with somebody there. I see. Yeah, Dan, Dan yeah, before uh, he left, uh, he said he's going to give me contact information for the person that's taken his position, but he didn't. And I'm going to, again, try to email him. Uh, but the only email I have is his email from the uh, the, the Commerce Department. So, but I will, I will try to. Oh, Cotter, I have another email for him that I can, because I've worked with him through my office before, so I can forward that to you. Perfect. He was very helpful, very friendly, and he has a, yes. a lot to He's contribute. Great. Yeah. Um, just to add to that, um, I'm sorry, Michelle, did you have a, another question for him? Okay. Um, so yeah, Danya, um, I know Danya as well. He's, um, he's my friend on Facebook, so I can reach out to him about that as well. Um, I think when she mentioned it was the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, um, I know Carlos, the, the one, the gentleman that used to be president for it, um, I want to say his name is Carlos, um, I can reach out to him. I know he's with the Carolina um, Small Business Fund, I believe, um, nowadays. Um, so we will share that information with you with the committee um, coming up as well. Okay, I appreciate it. Uh, moving on to social justice and 
uh, Public Safety Committee, sorry. No worries, thank you, Elki. Um, so we met this month to talk about um, just getting that report back about the Jamari Day event and how that went, any upcoming vaccination events we could support. So we had a good conversation about that. So we have a lot of partners, community partners that we can follow up with, um, not just in the Latinx community, but also beyond that to see like who wants, who is planning on doing vaccination events or is interested that we could also help support. Um, and one of the things um, we're going to figure out is like how much money we have left in our budget so that we can also give to those community partners to host these events. Um, we also talked a lot about um, or had a conversation about the um, police shooting that happened recently. So we had the new police chief join our last meeting. The shooting happened maybe a week prior to that happening. Um, and we were like, oh yeah, we didn't even talk about it, didn't address that. So we felt like, oh yeah, we should absolutely talk about that. So um, really want to have a moment of silence for Daniel Turcios. Um, so if we could just, you know, have a moment of silence for him, we'd really like to do that right now. Um, so we could do that now, that'd be great. Absolutely. Thanks, y'all. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, and we just wanted to, you know, recognize that this happened in our community, that it was a loss in our community, um, and really wanted to open up the space to talk about what are some things we could do to support the family, but also, you know, figure out, like, how can we prevent this from happening again in our community? Um, and so we had some ideas. So, you know, we also wanted to offer the space as a way to process it as a board. Um, we also talked about maybe having a communal listening session um, with the community or also meeting privately with um, Estelle Patterson to talk about like what our concerns are with like in this with what happened and also what we could do in the future to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Um, and also just submitting a list of requests to the chief. Um, and then also folks shared about possibly making a public statement from the board to the family. Um, yeah, and just wanted to get the board's thoughts about that because that's been really, it was weighing heavily on my mind and when we talked about it at the committee meeting, it was something that we, like Jordan and I spoke at length about and then Rasha and Fevin also gave feedback about it. So at this moment, I want to recognize uh, the, the information that Michelle and your subcommittee has shared. Um, thank you very much for bringing those difficult conversations, difficult issues up to our board. Um, some of the suggestions that were made were our amazing suggestions. Um, I was lucky enough to be invited to that meeting uh, where, you know, we, we att they attempted to strategize um, on the best approach. And I think as a board um, for the city of Raleigh, we need to represent and be um, active participants in all areas of what is happening in our communities. Um, I support um, any and all of the conversations that the comments that have been made, um, but it is you know, something that I think we need to discuss further um, to figure out what the best option is to move forward with making those decisions, um, whether it's one or the other or all three aspects that you mentioned. Um, what are everyone else's thoughts? I don't have a specific thought about it right now just because I feel overwhelmed by definitely emotion and I like it's hard to think about too hard so thank you Michelle and uh, that subcommittee for offering this as a place for processing and I just want to support that for us as a board it can be difficult to have what I'm sure everyone has their own personal opinions about the state of our system right now and har it harms our community. 
and wanting to do the best we can. And sometimes it feels like um, have to say and do the right thing to not cause further harm despite our personal beliefs of how terrible our current system is. So I just want to put that out there, that's all. Anyone else? Um, I want to speak out in support and also thank you, Michelle, for sharing um, what you did share. I support everything. Personally, I should say, I personally support everything that you um, have suggested so far. I think my only, anything in regards to the family that was affected on this, I think I, I would hesitate to do anything that would open any wounds that are currently, for lack of a better word, probably festering or not, you know, they're going through a lot of pain right now. And since we are a city entity, I would hesitate to do anything that while maybe well-intentioned may make things worse for them. Um, so I think if we do anything in reaching out to them, we need to be very mindful about what we do so that we do not cause any further pain. Um, and everything that we do um, moving forward and that should be done with a lot of intention because while we are all individuals who have our own very strong feelings about what happened, we are representing the city. Um, and so we have good intentions, but because we are representing the city and a lot of people are angry at the city from the situation, that might cause unintentionally cause more tensions. I, I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense. Um, but also I'm here as like a sounding board to completely help and support you on that as well, because I want to see something happen. And if this is a venue where we can do something, I think that we should do something because we have the power to do something. Thank you. Um, yes, Ms. Um, Dr. Rasha Muhammad. <laughs> thank you, Elki. Um, so first, thank you, Michelle and Fevin and Jordan. Um, for being such amazing committee members. Um, I have, I do have a lot of strong feelings about what has happened and even previous similar situations. Um, I appreciate you, Michelle, for saying things around bringing to the table this discussion and saying um, specific, specifically, how do we prevent this from happening? Um, so my, my two points, one is on a personal, from a personal like human level, um, creating some sort of letter to the family, like an open letter would be helpful, I think. Um, if this were my family or my specific community, I'd want to hear something from the city, like you recognize me, you see our pain. Um, and certainly not as an apology or anything of that nature, but just like a validity, like human to human. You know, we're, we are also sad and we're standing in solidarity with you and your family. The second point is because we are uh, representative or representatives of the city, um, including law enforcement, and perhaps even saying like these these are the incidences that happen that cause people to want to have discussion around defunding the police, um, because I'm paying tax dollars out of my money, um, and it is. Um, an oppressive system that i'm paying into that is now murdering people in the street. Um, that are a part of my community. And I want to um, make some sort of statement financially because that is what seems to make a difference within our societal structure. Money um, speaks volumes. And so I, that's the second point. I wanna make something around um, moving funds around to, to um, voice the hurt and pain that is happening within my community or our community. Those are all great points. I think at this point, um, maybe creating a an ad hoc committee um, to collaborate with public safety and um, social justice committee uh, would be appropriate. So we can break down and see, and then come back to the board, whether it's next meeting or a special meeting um, to further discuss it and come with a plan of action. Um, I'm not sure, do I need to vote on that? No, okay. So that is what I suggest at this point in time, but I wanna say that everyone's comments, um, thank you. 
um, and to your specific committee, thank you uh, for addressing um, the information. Um, I At this time, I would like to um, extend the meeting um, for 20 minutes um, due to the fact that we have two big business, two big items coming up. Um, do I hear a motion to extend the meeting from two to two twenty to discuss bylaws and nominations? <laughs> no, no one. Is there an alternate option? How do you, I would suggest 10, I would suggest 10 minutes at that point and then see where we are there. Okay, so you want to amend the motion to be 10 minutes. Okay, could, do I hear I a motion that. to extend the meeting 10 minutes <laughs> um, from the suggested time of two o'clock to 2.10? I can move that, yeah. Uh, that's me, Andrea. Andrea moves to... Do I hear a second? A second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Is that unanimous? I don't see everyone. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. But it is, it is majority. Unanimous. It is. Oh, it is? Okay. okay. Okay, great. Thank you for allowing that. Now we're moving, we're moving to bylaws. Bylaws, I'm sorry. Um, as you guys have received the bylaws that came down from the city clerk's office, along with the city of Raleigh lawyer, um, those were the bylaws, bylaw corrections and suggestions that were made to the previous bylaws that we sent to council. Um, at this time, um, I'm not sure where everyone what everyone thinks there are where we haven't received any comments. Um, there were two specific areas that they changed and that's introduced in the memo. Um, the memo states the following, bear with me, I'm sorry. Um, Article three, section one, Article three, section two, and Article five, section six. Um, I don't have, I don't oppose. I think that the suggestions that were made are appropriate. Um, but at this time, we are to debate, um, you know, for a period of five minutes, um, anyone that is opposed. Um, yes, ma'am. I'm not opposed. I want to comment on the spirit of the suggestions. Um, we're disturbed about how often last year we, or during our first year, we had to not continue because we didn't have a quorum. So two really big things have happened, which I think is wonderful. The spirit was to try to help us to be able to function, you know, when we don't have a quorum. So they did approve our idea of having alternates, which I think is fabulous, so that if we get a vacancy, we are ready to bring somebody on and we don't have to wait another couple of meetings to suggest the person, we vote on it, then the city council votes on it, then they come back to us. So I'm thrilled that they were in favor of that. I think that's fabulous. Also, another thing we were concerned about is we can't conduct meetings without a quorum. And I was very pleased with the way they straighted the new way of doing the quorum. So uh, I'm just pleased that they heard the spirit of what we were trying to present. And I'm very much in favor of these changes. I agree with the attorney. I'm sorry. I agree with the attorney. <laughs> okay. I agree is with the attorney anyone, too. Is there anyone that is opposed to these bylaws, the change in the bylaws? I, I think Araceli is wanting to make a comment. Oh, I'm so sorry, Araceli. Yes. Yeah. Um, just for clarification. So these are, so amendments went to council and council had a couple of questions and they did defer it back uh, for staff to review. So a city clerk's office and the attorney's office, these are their reviews. Um, so this is what they're proposing that um, gets sent over to city council. So city council still has to vote on this, 
So it would, depending on your vote. So now it's your vote um, so that it moves forward to, to council. So depending on your vote, so you do have to vote on this today, whether you know this is what you want your bylaws to look like. And if you approve um, as far as the suggestions and the changes um, that um, the city attorney um, made, um, then you would be good to move this memorandum and the changes to the bylaws that you're requesting um, and the suggestions that were made in here. Um, we'll move forward then for council's review. So once council reviews, um, you know, they, they will take it through the process of voting for, for the changes requested. So, um, and, and as you noted um, on, the, on the form that she sent um, were specifically uh, changes suggested um, and, and there are areas that are gonna be removed because these are areas that were used because you were planning a new board. Um, so, you know, there were specifications about alter, um, alternating years and all that. So we remo completely removed that, that area. And then the final draft at the end is the clean version, if, if you may. Um, so, yeah, so you would definitely have to move forward and, and vote to move this forward um, for council's review. Um, at this point in time, I'll entertain anyone that's against the suggestions that have been presented to us by the city attorney and um, the, the city clerk um, as presented to you in the email you received. Anyone opposed? To the suggestions and changes? No? Okay. Um, so do I... Can, I'll entertain a motion to proceed and approve the suggestions made by city clerk and um, city lawyer at this time. I move that we accept these changes as presented and for it to be sent back to the city council for their approval. Thank you, Ann. Um, do I hear a second? I second. I second. Uh, do we need to do a roll call vote? Yes. Or Okay. Yeah. Uh, we I'm prepared to do that. Well, okay. There's no one against. So why would we need? Right. Well, you could just do the hands as long as okay. everybody's in the camera. Just I think we should sure. be fine. Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. Raise your hand. Okay. Great. Aye. Um, aye. 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 Unanimous. Great. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Um, I want the agenda at this point to reflect that Sophie Ann. Um, Nicole is in, in the meeting. Um, she was not here for quorum, but she is in the meeting at this time. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, moving on to nominations for professional chair. Um, and Aracelis, I leave it to you. Yes. Hi, everyone. So I just want to let you know, um, we did get some nominations for today's um, where we are gonna be selecting a co-chair for the professional um, empty seat that we do have. Um, there were three individuals nominated. Um, I will mention their names and then I will open the floor if anybody else would like to nominate someone or would like to be, would like to nominate themselves. Um, uh, and then my- I have a question. May, may I say yes. something, uh, if, uh, if you don't mind? I would like to withdraw my name from the nomination, if you don't mind. And, and that's fine. Yeah. So nominate. So if you have been already nominated, you still have to run. And with you making the comment, um, I'm sure your uh, your team will understand. So um, hopefully they will vote for you. I have so a question if, about if your that. Name is in there. Um, you will still have to run. I have a question um, and, about and that. And then having said that, um, so nominations came through for Rasha Muhammad, for Michelle Bermeo Betancourt, and Coder. So, so we're, so we're Araceli, awesome. you're frozen and I have a question. Okay. Um, no? Did no. you hear? Go ahead. Okay, no, I have a question. Can you hear um, me? Now I can hear you, yes, yes. Okay. Um, before in previous meetings, uh, before this, Anne, nomin Anne recused herself from being um, a part of, of the board. Um, and I know when we, in our inception, um, Jordan was also nominated and she recused herself as secretary. Are you suggesting that Mr. Corder cannot recuse himself from any nomination if he was nominated? You, 
So that's not correct. They did, that is correct. They did, but they still had to be in the in the ballot. So they they she he exactly. still has to stay in the ballot. But the uh, the board does understand that. Of course, I I believe uh, with both uh, Miss Ann and Jordan that occurred as well, and no one voted for them just as a courtesy to okay. their suggestion. So. We'll move that's forward right. that way. We'll keep him that's in right. there and then as courtesy, you all decide. So um, we are gonna ask that once I call in the names, you do vote and you do show um, a hand so that Maisha is able to take in who voted uh, for who, just so we make sure we have the right amount of votes. Um, and also I am opening the floor right now, if anybody additional from the three men, I don't know if you did hear all three names, um, I know I froze a little bit. So it's uh, Michelle, um, it is um, Rasha and Kodar. Those are the three persons that are in Slate right now. But if anybody else is a professional member and is interested in nominating yourself or nominating someone else that's professional, this is the time to do so. Okay, should we move forward then with what we have? Okay, um, all right. We'll go with our first um, selection, which is Rasha Muhammad. So if you are voting for Rasha Muhammad, I ask that you um, raise your hand so that we can take a vote. Okay, we have one, two, three, four. I have five, six votes for Rasha. I have a question. Yes. Well, okay. Um, I have Michelle Bermeo Betancourt. If you are voting for her, please raise your hand. We have so one, two, you can three. Vote twice. No, only once. Okay. Okay, one, so two. Here's the question. <laughs> Who has more time availability, availability and can do the work as well? Out of both. Okay, we're, we're gonna keep going with the votes because we have to vote. So it's, um, let me see, can you raise your hand? I had five, um, let me double check on that. So if you are voting for Michelle. But there's people voting twice. So. There are. Four. I have four votes. Oh. Okay. And um, for uh, Kodar. Okay. Okay. Maisha, were you able to get everyone? I think we need to do a roll call vote uh, because I don't think the hands are yeah. fair. I'm yeah, sorry. I think having people say okay. who they vote for is going to be helpful. Okay, sorry. so I, let's I, let's go ahead and do the first one. I did get the 10 total, but okay. So the first one is for Rasha Muhammad. So if you could raise your hand it, or let's go ahead and get a, a roll call. Um, so if you are voting for Rasha, please raise your hand and- I'm off mic. Yes. Okay. So we have Elkie, Aunt Robertson, Michelle, Catherine, Jordan. And me. And me. And Carter. And Carter. Perfect. What is the number? That's six. And those voting for Michelle, please raise your hand. We have Febin, Andrea, and Rasha. Me. Rasha, put your hand oh, Rasha. Rasha. Did you did you vote for yourself already? No. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> so we do have six and four. And uh, Rasha Muhammad gets the six votes. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate everyone's.
it seemed like there was a back and forth between <laughs> um thank you they're both such great choices it's hard <laughs> it was. um thank you for everyone, thank you everyone better for choice. congratulations um um dr rosh muhammad uh we are moving on to old business um to receive recommendations for professional and community members to be sent to leadership we've not received any um, any recommendations that anyone would like to make today or would like to make in general via email to us. We need to fill these spot, the, the spots with community members and professional members. Um, they can go to our website, but if anyone is on our board, you could send this information to Andrea and myself and now Dr. Rasha Mohammed. Um, moving forward um any suggestions at this time yes michelle i had a question how many spots do we have open two you have two spots you have one professional okay. and one community one community okay, i thought it was three i thought it was three with two. Um, that's two yeah you only have um I believe the only two spots is the spot Eliasar left as a professional and um, Virginia as a community member. Okay, sounds good. And I have a question. Um, is the most accurate, if folks wanna learn more, I'm uh, looking at the website is, and there's not really any information there. Is there like a one pager that we have about like the requirements, the duties, the that sort of thing. I see that when it was in the application process, there was something similar, correct? And it outlined how much um, of a time commitment it would be as well. Ara, is that? Yeah, I, I believe when you click, so that it, in the page, there's just that if you're interested in participating, uh, hit the link. And so when you go into the link, uh, the application should have some of the information as far as, you know, what's your time commitment. I don't think it specifies when the meeting occurs or any of that specifically. So they just have something general in. Yeah, it says 10 to 15 hours a month. And I don't know about y'all, but that seems way over estimating. And that might be a deterrent for, for folks. So I don't know if we could look at like maybe creating some materials that that's just really inaccessible for most people, um, especially because there's, you know, it's not paid and it's on a Saturday. And so I don't know if maybe we want to think about like having more diverse members might require having more accessible methods to be involved. So just my two cents. I have some folks that um, came to mind, but I would like to send them some materials and that, that 10 to 15 hours is not I think that's across the board for boards and commissions. That's the request. So even when you signed up, I think there was a section where you probably checked off that said you were available for that amount of time. So it is a request that is in, in the application, in, in the general application that, that goes for all boards and commissions. Is that something we could recommend to change? That, that seems to me like an equity, like that seems like a role that this board could play. Like if boards and commissions are inaccessible, that's an equity issue across the city. Is that something that we could make note of? There is a board that's looking at, right, am I correct? There's some type of functioning body that's looking into these specific issues, Ada. No? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Um, as far as what, uh, equity within boards and commissions specifically? That, well, yeah, that and the specifications of each board independently and how they work cross-functionally within the city of Raleigh. Um, so right now, the big discussion obviously is communications. Um, they are gonna be working on a couple of things, but that I'm aware of as far as time commitment for boards and commissions and all that, that is not a discussion that I've, that I've heard. Um, I would say that the communication department would be the one to oversee that, the, sorry, subcommittee. I mean, um, so I would definitely follow up with Abdiel and others to see what we could come up with to get that and ultimately get an answer to your question for the, uh, the, the time suggested. Any other questions? And in multiple language, yes, absolutely, 100%. 
Um, the website up top does have the change, but to the one pager, just like we did for the January event, having the information in specific language would also help um, help them rather than just use Google Translate language accessibility for everyone. Yes. Um, so yes, um, anything else? Um, we are five minutes till time. Um, yeah, so we don't have any nominations at this time. Uh, any board announcements or resources that anyone would like to share? Could I share on behalf of the great work Michelle's uh, office is doing? I don't know if you guys have heard. Maybe you want to talk about it. Maybe I shouldn't say it because I'm so excited. <laughs> I concur. Uh, <laughs> Wake County has finally got, uh, it's called something different, I believe now, but Faith IDs um, active as a program with City of Broadway. They've been working on this for years. Um, it's going to be amazing. Basically, if you don't know what it is, um, it is a form of ID that will be accepted uh, in local city resources and departments. And um, it is a measure to allow people to interact with the police without as much fear because um, they have a form of ID and it's just amazing. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. I I'm just so excited. It's overwhelming so um to that point michelle can you share with the full board all the resources so they're aware of what's going on with faith ids yes so the community id that we brought to wake county is basically an id for folks who um either are undocumented or um whose gender doesn't align right with what the state has said it needs to be so um or even like for homeless folks for example who have a hard time getting an id because they don't have a, an address so um it's for folks who really need an id but have a hard time getting one right so this id will be um accepted by like the sheriff's department the rpd you can use it at schools at hospitals um but it's basically a basic form of identification for folks who can't get one through the state or have a hard time getting one through the state so um yeah it's just a really great like community resource that we've been able to put together today was actually our first public ID drive. We'll be having more in the future. Um, and, um, you know, I can't take any credit. Like I literally have to no work for that program to come into Wake County specifically at Pueblo, but it's been years in the making, like Andrea mentioned, and we're really excited to finally be able to bring it to the community because COVID definitely set us back a little bit in those terms. Thank you to all the members of El Pueblo, yourself and all community members at large that have helped, um, ha you know, bring that to fruition for all members in our community. Um, any other um, comments, resources? Thank you, Andrea. Nope, none of this time. Public comment. We have attendees. Are they here for public comments? Nope, no public comment. Okay. Uh, yes, I think two of us. Oh, great to hear. Um, Mr. Hemant. All right, so let's go ahead and move to adjournment. I will entertain a motion to <laughs> to adjourn this meeting. Um, do I hear a motion to adjourn this meeting? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? I second. All those in favor, say aye or raise your hand to adjourn the meeting. Aye. All right, that was unanimous. Oh, here we go. Okay, perfect. All right, well, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, y'all.